All right, so uh, now we have Julia Heinen, who I think is going to tell us about uh, uh, across many islands, the patterns across many islands. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I've been working on extinction-driven changes in Fujifor communities on Oceanic Islands. And uh, I've done that together with Daniel Kissling and Miel van Loon and Dennis Hansen, uh, while at the University of Amsterdam. But I've now started a PhD uh, with Michael Borgard and Karsten Rabik at the University of Copenhagen in Denmark. When humans first arrived on Oceanic Islands, they encountered species that they had never seen before. Imagine what it must have been like for the people of New Caledonia to encounter a giant flightless bird that made huge mounds of sands as nest. And the people of Vanuatu lived together with Myelania tortoises that had, spiny, uh, that had horns and spiny tails and were really big. And when the Dutch arrived on Mauritius, they also encountered giant tortoises. And, um, uh, and dodos and other unique species. Unfortunately, these encounters have one thing in common. They led to a lot of extinctions. And uh, because these people brought along their ship rats and other invasive species, and they really liked to hunt. For example, um, when the people of Vanuatu hunted the Myelania tortoise, they were unable to carry the big carcass back to their camp, and instead they only took the legs with them. And then later, archaeologists found a huge pile of leg bones at a campsite. So, extinctions on islands are quite interesting. But these extinctions in turn affect the species with whom they had interactions. Um, and one of these important interactions is uh, uh, seed dispersal by frugivores, whereby, seeds, uh, whereby fruits are eaten and the seeds are deposited further away from the mother plants. And this is important for a lot of um, for a lot of plants, sometimes up to 90% of plants in some regions depend on this. Um, and it can be done by birds, mammals and reptiles, and especially those that are large or able to fly. Um, islands in particular have lost a lot of, ex uh, have lost a lot of species. And um, their isolation, um, no wait, they're, um, they're limited in size and therefore uh, limited in their resources. And our isolation has led to a lot of extinct, spe uh, a lot of unique species. So we wanted to quantify insular frugivore extinctions globally. And uh, first of all, we wanted to look at whether frugivore uh, whether there are more frugivore extinctions in certain types of islands in terms of geography and island characteristics. But we also wanted to know whether some frugivores with certain traits are more vulnerable to extinction in terms of intrinsic traits within the species themselves and um, uh, changes at the whole community level. So we made a database of 74 islands worldwide and um, uh, uh, with birds, mammals and reptiles uh, that eat fruit and uh, it included only native species and uh, species that had recently gone extinct. Um, then we compared the communities before extinction with the communities after extinction. So first we look at the global distribution of um, uh, frugivore extinctions. Here you see that um, the pre-extinction species richness, so the community of um, frugivores before extinction. Uh, that is indicated by the size of each circle. Each circle uh, indicates one island. And the color of the circles indicates the proportion of this original uh, community that has gone extinct. So what you see here is that um, uh, a lot of islands have lost species, and um, uh, especially islands that are further away from the mainland, they have lost a lot of species, such as um, Hawaii, Oceania, and uh, the Mascarenes. And on Hawaii, uh, some islands have actually lost all their native frugivores. And um, so 45% of these islands have had uh, at least one frugivore extinction. And on average, this has led to a reduction in 34% of the species richness of frugivores. And the species I told you about uh, used to occur here. So then uh, we wanted to um, look at the proportional extinction in relation to island characteristics. And we did this by making a generalized linear mixed effects model uh, of um, a proportional extinction in relation to char island characteristics. 
So um, we uh, use Archipelago as a random effect, uh, which gives different intercepts for each Archipelago. Um, and the relative importance uh, uh, is shown here, uh, of each of the characteristics. Uh, so area, distance to mainland, and maximum elevation are significant effects and uh, precipitation, surrounding landmass proportion, and temperature were not. So what we found, um, uh, well, uh, each of these plots shows uh, uh, points for, uh, for the islands, and um, the lines indicate the archipelago effects. So we found that there are more uh, proportional higher extinctions on islands that are uh, small, further away from the mainland, and with a higher maximum elevation. And these are the archipelago effects for the islands where those species I told you about used to occur. Then we um, wanted to uh, look at uh, extinction probability in relation to intrinsic traits of frugivores. And um, uh, these intrinsic traits were body mass and ability to fly or not. So uh, we made another generalized linear mixed effects model um, uh, uh, with those uh, uh, for this, and um, you can see that uh, species that have a uh, higher body mass, they are more likely to be extinct. And this is especially true for flightless birds and mammals that do not fly, so the native rodents. Uh, and this is where those example species fit in. Then, finally, we looked at the uh, uh, the changes in body mass at the whole community level. So for 33 islands with extinctions, uh, we made a frequency distributions of their body mass. And this is represented by a density strip that is darker for higher frequencies of body mass. Um, and um, uh, so the, the blue lines, uh, they show the mean body mass before extinction, and the red lines show the mean body mass after extinction. And um, these islands are sorted according to amount of change, with the lower islands uh, having uh, a less change in body mass, and the higher islands, um, uh, the body mass has changed quite a lot. Um, and uh, those white points are uh, the extinct species. And, um, well, for instance, on, on those two islands in Hawaii, all of the native frugivores have gone extinct. Um, and you see that the, the extinct species are mostly large species, uh, and many of them are reptiles, uh, such as giant tortoises. So, um, this has led to um, a change in uh, mean body mass of 37%, so a decrease of 37%. And the maximum body mass has changed by 51% on average. So that is quite a severe change. And here you see the, the effects of the extinction of those two example species and how they influence their um, uh, community level uh, body mass. So we conclude that there are more frugivore extinctions on islands that are small, elevated and isolated uh, from the mainland. And um, uh, Species that are most vulnerable are those that um, are flightless and with a heavy body mass. And um, this has led to a, a reduction in body mass at the whole community level. So what can we expect from these, uh, uh, as consequences from these extinctions? Um, well, in general, losing seed dispersers can affect recruitment success of plants. And um, this is because of the Janssen Connell effect, whereby seeds that are deposited further away from the mother plants have a higher probability of success um, due to the lack of predation and competition. But also, especially losing large species is a problem because uh, those are the ones that are better at connecting plant habitat patches and thereby connecting um, uh, plant populations and in, uh, in helping with their gene flow and connectivity. Um, but also large species, they're the only ones capable of swallowing and dispersing the largest seeds. And when you lose those large species, then you're only left with the smaller uh, frugivores that are, that are not capable of swallowing and dispersing those small seeds. And um, then those, those large seeded plants are at risk of extinction. So 
for islands, uh, for island conservation and restoration, it is important that we do not only focus on restoring single species, but that we take specific measurements, uh, measures to restore the interactions between those species. Um, so, if you want to know more, please read our paper in Ecography about extinction-driven changes in fruitivor communities on oceanic islands. And also, our database is freely available on Dryad. Um, and um, I'm also presenting this as a poster, so you can approach me for further discussion. Uh, I would like to thank these people, and uh, this is my contact information. Thank you. <laughs>